Hi, I'm Dr. Mimi Guarneri, and I'm Medical Director at Pacific Pearl La Jolla. And I am really thrilled today uh, to introduce you to Dr. Cassandra Vigman. And Cassie, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I've admired the Pearl for so long, and now just having moved to San Diego, it's just a real honor to be able to join the team. Great. And you know what we're saying in healthcare right now, actually, is that mental health is the next pandemic mm -hmm. uh, because of everything we've been through mm -hmm. uh, with COVID. And of course, I think you know that from a cardiology perspective, it's all connected to the mind, right? I mean, if we're anxious, if we're stressed, mm -hmm. if we're depressed, if we don't have joy in our life, it brings uh, pain to the heart. Yeah, I mean, the mind and the body are completely connected and it's a two-way street. So we know that what we put into our bodies um, the kinds of environments we expose ourselves to affect our mood and our minds, but we may be not as aware of what we think affects our body. It affects our hormones, it affects our microbiome, it affects our brain function and even the brain structure. So it really, one is not complete without the other. And you know, you're the perfect person to talk about this because not only are you a PhD psychologist, you have a very, very special background. I mean, I know you from IONS, right? And I know you from all the incredible mind, body, and biofield therapy research that you've been doing for years, and your specialty in mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So um, why don't you share what your approach is? Uh, because I know you see people, children. I know you have a specialty in addiction. I know you have a specialty in uh, depression, anxiety, I mean, what, what do you love to do? How do you do it? Yeah, well, my main focus throughout my career has been on changing your worldview and how that affects everything. So the way you look at the world affects literally your reality in the sense that what you perceive is filtered through how you see the world. So two people can have the exact same experience and react to it very differently because they perceive it differently. Um, so I was trained as a clinical psychologist and a psychotherapist and throughout my career I've also engaged in mind-body medicine because I was sure that if we could unlock the keys to how people shift their consciousness that would ripple out into all the different areas of their lives. And so now in my clinical work with patients I really focus on not only addressing the individual issues that are happening in various aspects of your life, especially if it's a crisis at that moment or it's causing suffering or pain, but also the big picture. If you take a big step back and say, who am I? How do I look at the world? What, what are my unconscious assumptions that I might not even be aware of but are framing everything about how I act and what my behavior is? So worldview change and then leading to thinking pattern change and eventually behavior change. I think that's so important because we all, every one of us, create stories, yeah. right? And we have fears. Uh, we have things that have happened to us or childhood experiences mm -hmm. that mold who we are. So changing that experience, you know, we used to joke and say, do you see through rose-colored glasses? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you see the world? How do I change how I see the world? What kind of tools do you have in the toolbox for that? Well, there are really two pathways toward changing thinking patterns and worldviews and assumptions and behaviors. One is the learning. Just like if you were learning a language or learning to play an instrument, you practice over time. One of the great practices is mindfulness, but there are also all kinds of mind-body practices that have been developed over millennia through various spiritual traditions, and now in psychological traditions, where over time practicing 10, 20, 30 minutes a day and then checking in with a guide every week or every couple weeks, you build these muscles over time. But there's also another way of changing behaviors and worldviews, and that is through aha moments. That's through these radical transformations that can happen sometimes in a moment or sometimes in a few days or a week or a small period of time Sometimes those moments can feel like absolute disasters in your life. So you've just been diagnosed with an illness, you've lost a loved one, you're changing jobs. COVID even can be one of these triggers mm -hmm. for what people have come to call post-traumatic growth. 
instead of post-traumatic stress, there's something called post-traumatic growth. And if you set certain conditions in your life, you can make difficult experiences into growth experiences. And so what we do is work on creating an ecosystem of conditions in your life that you can set in place that make those aha moments or those big leaps in personal evolution more likely. You know, I think that's incredibly powerful medicine. We're not just talking about, I'm gonna go sit and talk to a psychologist and I'm gonna rehash what's happened to me over and over again. But, if, but what I think is important is these steps toward transformation mm -hmm. to going to a higher level of consciousness, if you might, and, looking at life in a different kind of way. Now you treat children as well as adults, Adolescents, right? not children. Adolescents. So adolescents, teenagers, young adults, adults. Some of my specialties are executives and people who are facing especially those kind of secret issues um, that are really hard to talk to somebody else about that you may feel embarrassed about or ashamed about. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of judgment-free zone and we really do take both a sort of deep approach of looking into what the root causes of things are, but also a very practical approach where we look at what ecosystem do you have in your life right now around nutrition, exercise, sleep, play and creativity, relationships, spirituality and meaning, practices, and we kind of assess all those areas and we see where are things, where are places that shift needs to happen and then again, we work on creating those conditions for that shift to take place. Can you just tell, uh, in a minute, I know it's almost impossible, but you know, you were so instrumental in running and overseeing IONS, which I think is one of the enlightened uh, institutes in our country, in the world. So could you just Sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Institute of Noetic Sciences, for people who aren't familiar with it, was founded by Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell, who was the sixth person to walk on the moon. Mm -hmm. And he, on his way back to the planet, had one of these worldview shifts where, you know, when we talk about creating the conditions for worldview shift, being in a space capsule in outer space and being the sixth person to have walked on the moon is one of those conditions, mm -hmm. right? Not easy for everybody to have that. But he noticed how crazy we're all acting on Earth, number one, um, where we have all these stories that we've told ourselves that are not true and are causing suffering. And number two, recognizing that we're all interconnected with each other and with the planet. And that awakening that he had of interconnectedness, which obviously also happens in spiritual traditions, he learned later, some people call it samadhi, you know, it's an awakening. He spent the rest of his life investigating inner space. And so I had the honor of being uh, the director of research and then the CEO and president of IONS. I worked there for 18 years and I'm still a senior fellow. And the way that makes it into my work is that not only can we use these practical tools to help people deal with things that are bothering them with their mental health or psychological blocks or emotional or even spiritual struggles, there also is um, a way that we can tap into something deeper that holds information for us that is outside of the traditional notions of space and time. These are those intuitive moments or those gut feelings or hunches or feeling like you have some kind of a guide, whether it's somebody who was deceased in your life or some teacher. You know, these things are, um, they sound like they might be far out, but they're actually very, very common in people's lives. And so bringing that noetic aspect, and noetic means inner knowing, uh, into the work makes the clinical work so much more rich and deep. And it's almost like it's not just you and me in the room together, it's you and me and a whole bunch of other um, support coming from the universe to help us um, achieve what we're trying to do with healing. It, it, to me, that I'm ready to sign up. I'm signing up. <laughs> and I think that um, you could do this by uh, computer, right, with yeah, our yeah. HIPAA compliant yes. uh, software. Yeah, right? really easy to do Zoom sessions. Zoom or mm -hmm. in person. And, I'm and in person is socially distanced right yeah. now. So, you know, six yeah, feet apart with masks. And it's amazing how well both yeah. of those work. You know, early on, I would have thought, 
how can you do therapy with masks on or online? Right. But it works very well, actually. And, and um, I am really excited that you're going to be offering this for Pacific Pearl La Jolla, that we're going to be doing a whole mindfulness, online mindfulness program. And we can talk a little bit about that at another time. And also, I hope you're going to incorporate some of those noetic principles yes. so we can tap into that inner knowing. Because as a physician, that inner knowing helps me make diagnoses. Mm -hmm. I may have all that medical knowledge, but when I have that aha moment, and it's funny because my patients know it, you know? Mm -hmm. So the more we can cultivate that, I'm really excited. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much.